Okay, good afternoon, students of ICT. So now we want to discuss lecture two, which is talking about essentials of computing. Okay, now let us look at hardware today as part of the essentials. We look at computing, storing, and communication with respect to hardware. But before that, we'd like to define what a computer is. A computer is basically an electronic system that can be instructed to accept, process, store, and present data and information. It is a physical device that takes data as input, transmissions this data according to the stored instructions, and output the processed information. That's what a computer is. Now, when you say computer system, we are referring to a computer and all the software that we are interconnected with it. Because a computer system comprises of five components, that's the hardware, programs, information people, and the procedures. But the two major components of a computer are hardware and programs. So information, people, and the procedures are supplementary or complementary what components of what the computer. Right. So now, as you can see, this is a computer system where we expect computer hardware and the programs, but to support these two major components, for information, for procedures, and the people that benefit from the computer system. So you can see here, the difference here is components of the computer itself, they are just two, hardware and programs. But if you say components of a computer system, there's a difference. That's where now these three are added now. Hardware, programs, information, procedures, and people. So please take note of that difference between computer components and the computer system components. All right. Now let's begin with the hardware. Hardware we know, these are the physical components that you can see and touch on the computer. So in general, them for the machine that carry out activities of computing. Okay, so what are these? Okay, these four categories that we are talking about: the input devices, the processor, output devices, and the secondary one, storage devices. As you can see from this diagram, it explains all these major categories of computer hardware and components. Okay, so take your time, study this diagram very well you see clearly all these things we're talking about. Good, progress. So hardware, as you can see, hardware here is made up of input devices, the processors, output devices, and the secondary storage devices. This is what makes up a computer hardware. Right. So a modern computer system consists of central processing unit, primary storage, secondary storage, input, output, and the communication what? Devices. As you can see from here, this diagram explains very well what we are trying to put across. Now, what are the input devices? So input devices sometimes has two meanings, okay, as a noun, it refers to the actual data or information entered into the computer. At the verb, it's a process of entering data or information into the computer for processing, storage, retrieval, and transmission. So there are input devices, which are the tools that perform this operation. Keyboard, the terminal, the point of sale terminal, the ones that you find in ShopRite, pick and pay, and then other shopping mall to do the sales. The mouse, the scanners, the barcode, the microphones, and the pre-recorded sources. These are examples of what input devices. How about the central processing unit, people? The processor or the central processing unit are just one and the same. So it's a set of electronic circuits that performs the computer process action, also the processing action. Right? It is the part of the computer system where the manipulation of symbols, numbers, letters, or cards. It also controls the other parts of the computer system. So because of this, a CPU consists of arithmetic logic unit and the control unit, where 
the arithmetic logic unit performs the computer logical and arithmetic processes such as adding, subtraction, dividing, determining whether a number is positive, negative, or zero. It also determines whether one quantity is greater than or less than the other, and when two quantities are equal. What about the control unit? The control unit is basically coordinates and controls all other parts of the computer system. It reads, store programs, one instruction at a time, direct other components of the computer system to perform the program that is required. We have a diagram here. You see how the CPU is divided into two, other and the control unit, and how the control unit have impact in all these other what, devices we are talking about. Okay. So a microprocessor or other processor is the smallest type of processor variable with all the processing capabilities of control unit, arithmetic logic unit allocated in the same chip. A chip, okay, it's a borrowed term from the traditional chips, we know how we pack them nicely. So this CPU or microprocessor looks like a chip sliced well, the size of the chip, where all these components you have talked about do their business. And normally it's found in the so-called microcomputers, which are very small computers that can run such small chips. So the CPU and other electronic components are located on the board mounted at the top of the computer base. This board is called the system board or the motherboard. So if you open the computer, you find the plate where all these internal components are found. That is called the motherboard system board. Now, talking about primary storage, okay, which is located near the CPU, is a primary storage. Sometimes we call it primary memory or main memory, where data and program instructions are stored temporarily during processing. Data and instructions are stored in unique addresses. So the primary storage has three functions. One, it stores all and part of the software programs that is being executed. It stores the operating system programs that manage the operation of the computer. And it also all data the program is using time. Otherwise, if the computer switches off, then that will be it. So the primary storage is open called random access memory. Why? Because it can direct access any random chosen location in the same amount of time. RAM is volatile, this means that its content are lost when power is to the computer is lost. So it's the biggest part of the main memory which we call RAM. There's also read only memory, which is a memory which can only read, okay, allow read. It cannot allow write to take place. So ROM, okay, ROM chips come from the manufacturing program already bent or stored to it. So you cannot write anything to this besides reading. What about the buses? Are these buses we know? No. The buses are the pathways inside the computer where data moves from one component to the other component. So call them buses. The, the pathways on the motherboard are called what? Buses. So there are three buses. That is the data bus, supposed to carry data. And this address bus, which carries the address, the actual location of the data, and the controls, okay, which carries the controls, what to do on a particular data once acquired. So the output devices, what are these? Also, in terms of noun, they refer to the information that is given out. But in terms of a verb, it's also a process of giving out the information that has been processed. All right. So there are other examples of output devices we can actually talk about. There is a printer, okay, we've got other devices that are controlled directly by the computer, like speakers for playing music and the like. All right. What about secondary storage? This one, as we can see, the primary storage loses its content when power is not there. So logically speaking, we need something that keeps data for a long, long time. That's the purpose we have the secondary storage. Examples of this, there can be so many. 
they have diskets, discs, the optical discs, the CDs are, DVDs, so on and so forth. So there are magnetic disks, the one that you know that stores data using magnetism, such as the hard disk and the tape. We you know the tape is no longer in existence now, but they are magnetic. We've got zip disks, which are similar to diskets. Okay, they're a bit smaller, but they more serve the purpose of the disket. We have read only disks, which okay allows the information to be read from them without writing on them. For example, we buy a CD that has antivirus. That CD is a read-only disk because you can only get what is on the CD. You cannot write on it. Okay, as you can see from here, right? So these are examples of the external, okay, or secondary storage, as you can see, right? Peripheral equipments. This word peri means outside. Peripheral equipments are talking about equipments that are around the computer system. General terms used for any device that is attached to a computer system is earlier in the also. So then, programs. Let's talk about programs. In this case, the software that is in charge of the hardware. So the software is a general term for the set of instructions that controls the computer or communication network. A program set of instructions that direct a computer to perform a certain task or produce a certain result. But also communication programs, which manages the interaction between the computer system and the communication network and the transmission of data programs and information over the network. There is also operating system which is very, very important. A combination of programs that coordinates the actions of the computer, including its peripheral, the devices that are around the computer also controlled by the operating system. So examples of operating system, we've got all Windows operating systems, such as Windows XP, Windows 7, and also Windows 10, the one that is current. So the graphical user interfaces, these are operating system that allows users to use icons rather than the commands. Remember the, the commands for which you get. So it's what you see is what you get. But also the interfaces, which are the landing pages for a person to interact with the computer. We've got also the software packages, you know, packages, right? An application that focuses on a particular subject, such as word processing, Okay, and other business sort applications that sort out business tasks. We have documentation also, an instruction manual that accompanies the software. Because if the software is produced, it needs a guidance or documentation that helps people how to use the system. So every software goes with a documentation that will guide the users and the developers what changes and how to maintain the system. All right, people. So let's continue with the application packages, such as the uh, spreadsheet, the ones that are used for, for computation purposes. That's why it's called the business package, Excel. We've got also word processing programs that are used for text processing, editing text, so on and so forth. We have also desktop publishing programs that are used to, to process text images and other features for adverts. Want to publish information, you will definitely do this using what? Desktop publish. We have also graphic presentation programs such as PowerPoint, like the one that I'm using to, to offer this lecture is graphic presentation PowerPoint. We have also photo editing programs. This is quite common. That's why you have to be very careful, people. You must remember the computer ethics before you change anyone's photo or concept. Yes, we benefit from them, but remember our concept. But also illustration programs, the one that are very good for drawings, okay, where artists benefit so much using these visual forms of what? Programs. There's also a database management system that helps someone to come up with a database for storage. 
keeping the files in the computer as opposed to keeping files in the cabbage files where anything can happen, fire can destroy what all those papers. We have database, all right? A collection of data and information described in terms of interest to an organization. Those are called data bases. What about a browser? So clients, okay? Client computer program designed to allocate and display information in the world wide web. These are called browsers. Like for example, Google Chrome, okay, Opera Mean, right? Explorer. All these are the examples of browser. Without it, you cannot actually have the information that is displayed on the world wide web. So it needs these software packages for us to use the computer effectively. There are also information system that helps managers to do their business very well, such as management information systems. And you've got systems that helps operational workers in shop right, pick and pay, or anywhere in banks to do their transactions very well. And these are called transaction processing systems. So basically what you're saying is the software is basically designed to solve a particular problem. So there are so many problems that humans have which they will need the services of the computer to sort them out. These are the ones that we're discussing here. Now, as for programming language, these are used to help developers to write other programs that will do what us wants to have simplified. We have other programs such as utilities, which uh, helps the program to perform routine tasks such as sorting. And also protecting the computer is part of good utilities and viruses are there. We've got customized softwares, which basically are tailor made to solve a particular problem or an individual. Right? Let's talk about now the software trends. So, greater use of pre written software packages and the greater use of pre written components is on the high demand. So object-oriented programming, okay, which is the software development tool, combining the data and the procedures to one object, will work very well to solve the problems that are there because software is ID on demand as we speak, All right? So let's see reasons for using information technology. Information technology as these Okay, terms such as data, text, sounds, and images. The ones that we earlier on in the first lecture talked about what is data, what is information, and what is knowledge. Right? So as you can see from the from the diagram here, you can see information in terms of image, in terms of sound, in terms of text, right? We need this in our daily life. So that's why information system is needed well, it makes all these okay to come on one single platform well integrated platform so we need them. so users and creators of it applications the end users are the people who uses it in their jobs or personal lives we call them the end users right so information technology professionals are the ones who are responsible for acquiring, developing, and maintaining what means sort of commands. Where you find a programmer, a systems analyst, a system designer, web designer, project managers, okay, trainers, computer operators, so on and so forth. These are information technology professionals. They're not end, they're not just end users, they are information professionals which we have seen maybe here. Okay. So the end users and the creators of application packages, they are basically called programmers, people who write programs, right? And the data centers are the facilities where large programs are located where information needed for them to create programs is what? Located. These are called the data centers or basically what? Computer centers. 
So a computer engineer is the one who is responsible for designing, developing, overseas the manufacturing of the equipment. So this one is the hardware based, it's not just software based. A system engineer, this one is IT professional who installs and maintain what? Hardware, right? So there's a difference. This one, computer engineer, he designs, develops. The system engineer, he installs and maintains. So there's a difference. So processes to use and maintain IT. What are the processes if you want to maintain and use ICT? You actually need to understand the procedures. That is the step-by-step -step process for a set of instructions for accomplishing specific results. That is, you need to know, understand the operations of the machines, how to back up and recover in case the system is corrupt, and how to protect and develop the information system. So look at this. So the four types of procedures which we need for us to process and maintain ICT. We need to back up and recover. We need to secure, protect the system, and we need to develop what? That's what is under procedure, right? So operation procedures, the procedure that describes how a computer system application is used, how often it can be used, who is authorized to use it, and where the results of processing should go. Those are called operation procedures. And the backup procedures are the procedures that describe how and when to make extra copies of information for software to protect against what? Process. The recovery procedures and action taken when information software must be stored or restored. What about security procedures? These are procedures designed to safeguard data centers, communication networks, computer, and other IT components from accidental intrusion or intentional intrusion. So security software is a software that is designed to protect system and data, such as Kaspersky, Avast, and so many programs that you know that are meant for protecting software and data. Then developing procedures is a procedure that explains how IT professionals should describe user needs and develop application to meet those needs. Right. An introduction to systems. Basically, a system is a set of components that interact to accomplish a purpose. So a single user system, basically a computer, okay, personal computer, and an ICT system used by one person is a single user system. So a system that stands alone, a system that is not interconnected to other companies or other networks is called a single user system, or basically a standalone system. So a multi-user system is a communication system in which more than one user share address, program, information, people, and procedures. So if your system is on a network, yes, it is a multi-user system because it will be shared by so many people, not just one person. Okay. So information processing activities associated with information and functions such as capture, which is input, upload, or download. What's the difference between the two? Someone can say, I'm uploading a file or I'm downloading a file. That's the difference. To upload is to send a file to a PC, but to download is to get a file from a PC. That's the difference. Right, people? Then when you process, you compute, update. You sort, you clarify, you summarize. That's what it means. And under updating, you can either do the batch processing or the real-time processing. What's the difference? The grouping and processing of all transactions at once is called batch. But if you process each transaction as it occurs, that's what you call real time process. Output of okay, generation, you generate output, okay, under storage, you require, store, and retrieve. Then transmit, basically sending of data. So basically, this is how far you can go in lesson two. As we actually go with this technique of online classes and physical classes, even if you miss the classes that are 
done physically, don't worry, as long as you subscribe, you will be able to get the, the information that you miss in class. In this way, you can use this to complement the lecture notes in this course. Thanks very much.